Morning. In this video, I want to talk to you about apical dominance and how it governs the growth and eventual shape of all of your plants, trees, bushes, vines. It's going to govern it all. Let's talk about it. All right, so here's an example of apical dominance. This is a lantana bush. And lantana bushes, they follow apical dominance rules where the branches will just continue growing, especially if it's this year's growth, if it's new green growth, it'll continue growing in the same direction until you trim the end of it, until you nip that tip of that branch. It'll just keep on growing with that apical dominance. And so you want to make sure that you prune those so that they change. For example, the ones in my yard, they have a decent shape, but you'll notice that there's a few exceptions. You see a few branches that are kind of sticking out. And I'm going to show you why. So if you look down this branch, you look down and this is green all the way down to where it's brown, which basically means it's connecting to last year's wood in a one straight vine. So what's basically happened here is I, this particular vine just barely surfaced with the edge of the plant and it's never been pruned. It's never been given its apical, it's never had the apical dominance taken away. So as you can see here, I'm nipping off that tip of that lantana um, branch and that'll cause that green growth, which is what's critical for the shape of the plant to have its apical dominance removed, which is gonna cause it to branch out from all nodes below that apical point. And so this is why most people, when they just blindly prune their bushes, they end up having that decent shape for a while until eventually one of those slow growers surfaces. Here's more examples of these. These have been pruned. You can also see this with bougainvilleas. You can see that these branches haven't been pruned this season. And so they just continue with their apical dominance growing outward. Whereas in this one, those tips have been snipped off. And so the apical dominance has been taken away. And so those hormones are being distributed throughout you know, the side shoots and things like that. So you have much better branching. You can also see apical dominance in this mulberry tree. And if you have mulberry trees, you'll understand how this works. You almost want to anticipate the way the tree is going to grow and how you want it to eventually look. So, I don't want this tree to get too high because I want to be able to pick the fruit. So I would say, you know, I'm about 6'3", so this is about eye level with me. And I think I don't want the tree to branch until it gets about seven or eight feet tall because I don't want to be smacking my head on the branches. And so basically the way I'm going to prune it is I'm going to have the trunk get to about here and then I'm going to want the branches to kind of spread over my head in such a way that I can walk under the tree with no problem but still reach the fruit. And then I'll probably, you know, put down a tarp and shake the tree to get mulberries off for harvest and things like that. But basically you're planning out the way you want your tree to look. And I basically want to maintain apical dominance, at least on this main branch for a while. But you'll notice that I've left some of these other side branches and it, I did get some branching. Um, and that's because when I bought this tree, they pruned off this tip right here. Okay, so they took away the apical dominance and the side shoot became the new apically dominant branch. And then we still have some other branches that are coming out. And this all comes down to a plant hormone, um, a number of different plant hormones. One of them is called auxins. And what happens is the, the phloem, or the xylem I mean, is the water from the roots traveling through the vascular system of the plant. And that hormone or that um, fluid, that water, so to speak, for the plant contains minerals and also hormones. And it communicates information from the plant roots up to the tips of the plant. And so what basically happens is as those flow, the highest concentration of these hormones are going to be through the apical meristem. And so this, these um, apical tissues are gonna receive the majority of these hormones telling them to continue growing forward. But when you break off that tip, it causes those hormones to redistribute and to travel to other parts of the plant, including positions where branching will occur. And we'd actually even see this. Like if I was to snap this tip off right here, these different buds, not all of them, but some of these different buds, depending on where these hormones concentrated themselves into, those would turn into branches. Those would branch out and become side branches. And they actually look really cool when they first start doing this. Let me see if I can show you. Um, this one's already developed a little bit, but about a week ago, this just looked like a very, very light green, strange looking, it almost looked like a flower, like a green flower, because it was just like a cluster of all these leaves. And it basically creates a special bud that looks different than these buds. It, it, it's hard to explain, but it kind of looks like this. Just, you imagine that cluster together, almost like a green rose. You'll get one of those forming, and that's the formation of a new meristem. And that'll 
you know, start growing out in that direction based on the hormones that it's receiving from the, from the roots, I guess, telling the plant what it's supposed to be doing with nutrients from the plant. All right, so I wanna nerd out a little bit. So if you've taken botany, or you might've learned about this in like high school biology, you learn about plants. Plants have hormones that regulate growth. Um, indole acetic acid or indole 3 acetic acid, there's a few different names for it, rooting hormone. Plants have this naturally, and this natural hormone helps to regulate both shoot elong elongation and then root elongation and then root development. That has a few different functions. And there, it's disputed where this is found. There's some evidence that implies it's in the xylem, some in the phloem. Just to give some examples, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, the point being, as you can see here, when the shoot is intact, the sugars and the indole acetic acid make it to those nodes. As you can see where it has, it's on top of that leaf, it says sugars, that's supposed to be a node. And as those hormones are, are able to continue up that um, path, it's going to continue feeding the apical meristem with the majority of those sugars. And that's what causes that shoot elong elongation. And so if you decapitate or if you nip the tip or cut a branch, it's going to change the distribution of those sugars and those hormones causing branching. So this is the hormones and the sugar concentrations that cause the bud development, bud growth, side shoots, all that stuff that you see when you nip the tip of a vine and the vine starts branching or a tree branch or whatever it is. All right, so this is what indole acetic acid looks like. So in chemistry, you denote the position of the acetate group, which is why it's indole three acetic acid because on carbon three in this, um, that's where the acetate is. So we call it indole three acetic acid or indole 3 acetate and this hormone is sensed by plant cells and it helps the plant to communicate with different positions in the plant and then here's a diagram of xylem versus phloem so this is the vascular tissue or the veins of the plant so to speak so on the left you have the xylem and the xylem transports water and minerals that's that are picked up by the roots up through the plant up to the leaves so the leaves can perform transpiration forced evaporation and that just continues this process and creates a negative pressure that just drives water up into the plant. And then we also have phloem, which has some back and forth communication of both water and food and plant hormones. Um, so there's a combination of hormone transport and this isn't fully understood. I was actually doing some research before this video and there's a lot of back and forth in different published articles. Some say it travels through the xylem, some say it travels through the phloem. So I think it's a little bit of both. Um, especially since you know the evidence shows that this elongation occurs at the apical meristems and the, the water has to be coming up from the roots and so it's probably transporting through the, xy the xylem so anyway hope this helps you to understand how um, apical dominance works and how elongation works in your plants so that you can decide how to make your plants grow and make your yard look beautiful hope you have a wonderful day thanks for listening and watching if you have any questions or comments Feel free to start a discussion in the comment section.